So what happens on the cross is Jesus' life becomes a substitute for yours. So you're not perfect, right? But that's the standard, remember? The glory of God is the standard. So because you're not perfect, Jesus comes and lives a perfect life for, for you, for me, because that's what God demands of us. But when he goes to the cross, all of my sin and all of our sins, the lying, the coveting, the backbiting, the gossip, so on and so forth, not loving your neighbor, not loving Jesus above all, all of that sin was put on Jesus. How's it going? <laughs> <laughs> Having a good day? Yeah. Any opinions on this? Yeah, I mean, I agree, but I no opinion. You say you agree? I mean, in positive that killing a baby is no way. So there's no, no good in killing a baby? Yeah, so, do you go to school here? Yeah. Yeah, so, did you know that in Kansas, there's six to 8,000 babies murdered every year through abortion? Did you know that? Yeah. Yeah, so like, that's, that's 20 to 40 a day, like, as we're talking right now. So like, did you know that? Yeah, so. Because I'm not from here, I'm from Nepal. You're, oh, you're from Nepal. Yeah. Cool, well, how do you like it here? Uh, I like it here. <laughs> Uh, you know, like it's so normal to talk about sexual things here. But yeah. Here was not. Yeah. So. <laughs> it's a little uncomfortable, isn't it? No. Yeah. Yeah. So like these signs with like Shane, turn your sign real quick. So like that stuff, that's it's really bad, isn't it? Like, but what? Yeah. Yeah, but we would, we would, we we 100% agree. Like that's brutal, yeah. and that's just it's disgusting. But the unfortunate part is like, that's the reality yeah. that we live in, but we don't think about it yeah. because we never see it, yeah. you know? So the, the main issue is, is like, we're out here to like, not only talk to people who are for abortion, but like people like you, you know, you think it's wrong. You know, God thinks it's wrong. So we're just out here trying to spread information. Uh, you want to take a drop card real quick? I do, but I can't, I can't. So I'll give you this one. So on there, it'll have a website on the back. And then you can have phone numbers for us and all of that stuff. Uh, can I ask you, do you have a religion or anything like that? Are you religious at all? Not religious, but where I am from, we are Hindu here. Okay, would you consider yourself a Hindu? <laughs> I, I expect everything where, where I'm from, that is Hindu then. So yeah. I follow. So, so you wouldn't say that you're a Hindu, but you would say that like you just follow it? Because that's kind of everything you've ever known. Yeah. Are you familiar with Christianity at all? Yeah, uh, yeah, my friends. Yeah. My boyfriend is Christian. Okay. Did your boyfriend go here? Yeah, no, he's from um, Africa. Oh. He's so he's a Christian. Yeah. So how does that work? Strict, you know, I mean, strict one. Yeah. Oh, so is he a strict Christian? Yeah. Well, he doesn't eat pork. He doesn't eat pork? Yeah. Oh, well, Jesus said that that's fine. He made all foods clean. I, I ate pork yesterday. You know what I mean? So, yeah. So, like, how does that work? You being Hindu and him being Christian. He follows my, like, you know, there are Dipavali, all that stuff in our country. Like, we we have a lot of festivals there. Yep. And I also celebrate here, like, bringing all the stuff. And he agree on that. Like, he also celebrated with me. Really? Yeah, and... I also, um, I also respect his thing. Yeah. Going along. Yeah. I'm not that strict to mine, and but he's so strict. So. Yeah. <laughs> so here's my question. You mind if I get like a little serious for a second? So my question would be, so the Bible actually says that Christians shouldn't have any friendship with the world, and that's kind of like a, a blanket ter like term for like we shouldn't like have any friendship with other religions not like not that I can can't be a, your friend yeah. but that I shouldn't like actively participate in it oh. right because John 14 6 says that Jesus is the way the truth and the life yeah. but here's what he says next that no man can get to the father except through him so nobody can get to God unless it's through the son of God Jesus so like the Bible would actually 
son of father, yeah. son of God, son of spiritual. I don't know. I have learned. <laughs> yeah. So, so the Bible, the God has shown Himself to be triune. There's one God who exists in three separate persons: yeah. the Father, Son, and Spirit. Yeah. Right. So yeah, like, what would you say to that? That verse that I mentioned, John fourteen six, that Jesus is the way. He's the truth. He's the life. But no one can get to God except through Him. So that means that if you don't worship Jesus, God says that you won't be with Him. So what would you say about that? Uh, I don't believe that. Oh, you don't believe that? Because I haven't taught that way. I haven't okay. taught that. Um, like every religion has same thing, you know, every religion taught the same thing that like you have to be kind to others, you okay. have to respect each other. Every religion uh, teach us the same stuff. Okay. Same, same, we learn the same thing, like be kind, be lovely. And, yeah. and then I think that's the way to any God. Like, oh, okay. Not only Jesus, not only... So you think I there's many ways? Yeah, like, yeah, I, I mean, being, being one, like not... Um, performing or involving in any bad thing, being good is the only way you can go. Okay, so being good yeah. is the only way to the Father. Mm -hmm. So my question would be, is, are you good? Are you a good person? Do you think that you're a good person? <laughs> That's yeah. hard, isn't it? So you think you're a good person? Let me ask you, have you ever got mad? Mm -mm. Yeah, <laughs> so one of the Ten Commandments is thou shalt not murder. And Jesus says that if you have hate in your heart, that you've committed murder. So, have you ever, like, seen something that you wanted and kind of got envious over it? Like, other people had it, and you were like, oh, that would be so cool for me to have. And it, yeah, like, my height. Oh, your height? Yeah. That's, you want to be six foot three like me? Is yeah. that what you're saying? <laughs> no, my work is six two. Oh, yeah. You only date guys over six foot, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, hey, there's my wife right there. Yeah, she, she picked the tall guy, too. So, that makes sense. So, yeah. So, back to what I was saying. So you've coveted, right? You've wanted something that wasn't yours. Uh, ha have you ever lied? Ever? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> so just by that, just by the Ten Commandments, right? Yeah, but I, I also worship on Tuesday. Okay. Um, I fast that day. Yeah. And I, I ask my God, like, not my mind, like, I ask, I, you know, yeah. I ask Him that um, everything I have done this week. Yep. Like, every day. Small stuff, small scenes. Yep. To forgive me. And okay. That day on Tuesday. So you, so you worship the Hindu God. Yeah. Right. So you know what the first commandment is? Huh? The first commandment that God gave us, in the Bible, is have no other gods before me. So you've broke that one too, right? Because you've had a god other than Yahweh, right? So like just from those four, like you've admitted that you are idolatrous, right? You've lied, you've coveted, and, and then you've murdered in your heart, right? So now let's, now, do you think you're a good person? Because <laughs> here's, the, here's the thing. What's your name, by the way? Garima. A Garima? Garima. Garima. Yeah, name? My name's Wes. Wes? Yeah. Wes? W-E-S. Oh, Wes. Wes, yeah. So, so just by that, right? Here's my thing. Uh, I'm not a good person either. Yeah. I've lied. Yeah. I've been angry at people. I've coveted. I've worshipped other gods before I became a Christian. So I'm not a good person either. But here's the cool thing, right? Romans chapter 3 says no one's good. There's not, I'm not just saying, oh, you're a bad person. Every person here, like every Christian, we're not good. Like the Bible says that the mind that's set on the flesh, which means that's sinful, can't please God. We have no capability of pleasing God, right? So even in your fasting and your, your worshiping and stuff, you, you can't please him because you're still in your flesh. You're trying to, you're trying to gain his grace, yeah. right? Yeah, so, and my friend, you just speak next one. Yeah. He teaches us like stuff to us. Yeah. And he say, Maybe try again. He, he say that, that God of Father, God of Son. Son and Spirit. Yeah. And he said that um, Jesus is, Jesus tell people to worship him too, you know? Yeah. Because he, he doesn't like... <coughs> Sin. Yeah. I mean, he... You have to make yeah. him a friend, not a God God. Like. Oh, no, no, no. He's the Lord. Oh. He is the only Lord of heaven. Uh, Isaiah 45 says that 
or this is God speaking in Isaiah 45. He says, I am the Lord alone. There's none before me and none come after me. So he says he's exclusive that all these other gods, and like I respectfully say this to you, like the, the, the God that you're worshiping, it doesn't exist, right? So, but listen to this, all right? So you know how I said none of us are good people? So the Bible says that all of us have sinned, which means that God has a standard and God says, you know, thou shalt not or thou shalt. We transgress that, right? But even more deep, the Bible says that all of us are born from our mother's womb into sin, right? So have you ever wondered like why you don't have to try to do bad things? They just kind of naturally happen every once in a while. It's because we are born sinful towards God. So it's not that it's not the the oh, issue. Yeah. The issue isn't just merely that we sin. It's that we're inherently sinful, that we can't please God. But here's, here's the encouraging thing, right? So none are good. We've all sinned. The Bible says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So that's the standard that we have to meet. Not just that we've all sinned, but that we don't have the, we're not as perfect as God is, yeah. right? Would you admit that? Yeah. So with that, the Bible also says that the wages of sin, so the payment for that is death, oh. right? So if we've sinned and you've admitted you've lied, you've coveted, right? If you've sinned, God says that your payment is death. But here's the cool part. The very next thing that God says in his word is that, but his gift is eternal life. So if you're left by yourself, that means that God must give you death eternally, right? But if you turn to him, right? If you turn to Jesus, right? The one God of heaven, right? Remember, he's the way, the truth, and the life, and there's no way to the Father except through him, right? So it, by turning to him, by putting your faith in his person, right? Who he is and his work. He was born of a virgin. The, the Holy Spirit conceived within Mary. So he was born sinless, right? Because he didn't have the sin of Adam, the first created human. So he's born, he's born sinless. But here's the cool thing. You know how we're just talking about how we sin and we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God? He didn't. Oh, yeah. Hebrews chapter 4 says that he was tempted in every way that we were, yet without sin. So he never transgressed his law, right? So by doing that, then he sacrifices himself, right? The Bible says without the shedding of blood, there is no remission for sin. There's no forgiveness. So blood has to be shed for the forgiveness of sin, right? So hear this, because we're sinful, because we've all fallen short of the glory of God, God himself has came to his planet, this earth. Some 2000 years ago, sometime around there, right? He dwelt among us. He was tempted in every way that we were. Then he goes to the cross yeah. to die because what's, what's the wages of sin? What did I say? The wages of sin are death, blood. right? And blood has to be shed, right? So you, has it ever been explained to you what happens on the cross? This is so fascinating, okay? So what happens on the cross is Jesus's life becomes a substitute for yours. So you're not perfect, right? But that's the standard, remember? The glory of God is the standard. So because you're not perfect, Jesus comes and lives a perfect life for, for you, for me, because that's what God demands of us. But when he goes to the cross, all of my sin and all of our sins, the lying, the coveting, the backbiting, the gossip, so on and so forth, not loving your neighbor, not loving Jesus above all, all of that sin was put on Jesus. So God takes your sin from you. So you're no longer guilty of it, right? So here's the fascinating thing, right? Not only is his life substituted for yours, but his death is substituted for yours. So there's a trade-off there. The reason that Christ got punished on the cross was because he took the wrath from the Father that we deserved. So here, here's the, the crossroads, right? Like as a, as a professing Hindu, right? God's word, God's word says that all who do not turn to him, instead of Jesus taking their punishment, that you'll have to take that punishment for all of eternity, 
right? That's almost unfathomable, isn't it? Right? But if you believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father, right? And confess with your mouth that he is Lord, you'll be saved. That wrath that God has coming towards you, Christ will step in and defend you from it. He took it for you. And then God grants you eternal life. And his spirit comes into you. And he dwells with you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now, doesn't that sound so much better than just trying to be good and trying to do the right thing and trying to earn your righteousness? Doesn't that seem a lot better? Yeah? Let me ask you something. How do you feel right now? Um, <laughs> I'm listening to something new. You're listening to something new, right? So, what'd you say your name was again? Garima. Garima, yeah. right? So, Garima... Here's all you have to do to be a Christian, right? Everything I just told you, believe that, trust in that. And this may be the first time you ever heard it. And you may feel God convincing you of this. The Spirit of God may be saying, Garima, this is true. This may be different, but this is true. You are a sinner. You are headed towards death. But my gift is grace. You don't have to work your way towards Him. Jesus worked his way towards you, right? And you don't have to get emotional about it, but it's, no, no, it's real. Gonna, okay, okay, got you. The, it's just the wind, right? Just yeah. the wind. So here's the thing, right? Here, pivot this way. I'll block the wind from you, okay? So here's the thing, right? All you have to do is trust in that. Realize that he's the creator of the world and that because he created you and I, he knit us together. That's why this stuff is so important, right? Because this is a human, right? And when God made humans... He made us in His likeness so we have value, right? You're valuable. Yeah. I'm valuable. These babies are valuable, aren't they? Right? So, Garima, my encouragement to you would be think on these things, right? If you want, if you want to talk about this more, I'll give you my wife's number. And you can say, hey, I just wondered what Wes was saying about this or that. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? But also, you can go to that website and you'll find the gospel everywhere and the way to salvation, okay? Absolutely. Garima, can I pray with you real quick? Can I pray? Can I talk to God for you real quick? You know what prayer is? I didn't get it. Prayer? You know what prayer is? Yeah, I have prayed. My friend did for me. Okay. I'm no longer slaves of fear. Yeah. I am. Well, that's for Christians. Yeah, not, not everyone's a child of God. You know, not everybody. We're all made in His image and likeness. Yeah. But, but we're not all His children. Yeah. Well, can I pray for you real quick? Why are you dating this guy? He doesn't, he doesn't seem like an actual Christian. Where's your boyfriend? Oh, he's in Africa, right? No, here. Here? Go get him. Say, hey, I got a guy I want you to talk to. No, no, don't yeah, say do that. Freak. I mean, you didn't expect my thing. You never say anything. He's there. Don't, don't say anything, okay? Yeah. Call him. Huh? Hi. How's it going? She's been bragging on you, man. No. She, she said you're a really good Christian. <laughs> That's what she said. Really? Yeah, what's your name, man? I'm Tanasha. What's up? Tanasha? Yeah, yeah. Where are you from? I'm from Zimbabwe. That's what she said. <laughs> yeah. Hey, so we were, we were just talking about a little abortion stuff. Oh, yeah? But then it went into the gospel. So she, she said, yeah, it's wrong. You know, it's a human, you know, and we don't need to be murdering humans, right? But I also told her that this is happening like six to 8,000 times a day in this state. This one? Yeah, in Kansas. Let me get you something real quick. There's that. I'll give you another one too. Um, there. So that'll have a bunch of information about it. But yeah, she said that you're a Christian. Yeah, I mean, that's the way to go, isn't it? Like... It's a different direction. Like, you need direction. Like, in Christianity, it's like the way to do that. Yeah. Now, here's the interesting thing. <laughs> She's not a Christian, right? <laughs> so what's up with that, man? Yeah. I'm not yeah. saying break up with her. <laughs> now, I will be honest. I did tell her I did tell her that I did ask her why she was dating you. Because I was like, who dates a non-Christian, <laughs> right? Right? Uh, yeah, but, I mean. But you should witness to her, man. I, I mean, she likes the, the music. Like, I always played in her room. And she's like, I love the music. Yeah. But, I mean, yeah. I'll talk to her. You know, yeah. <laughs> well, hey, man. Can I pray for you guys? I mean, of course. Honestly. Absolutely. My name is Wes, by the way. Oh, nice to meet you. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Let's pray, guys. No, no? Okay. Yeah. 
Lord Jesus, we come to you and we come to your Father just asking, Lord, that you would continue to help all three of us think about your truth. God, you created the world and everything in it. You gave us life and breath and everything that we have. God, you, since you've made us, we're accountable to you, God. You own us. And that while we may not all be your children, we are your creation. And you've created us in your image and in your likeness. And you've given us value, God. And because of that value, Lord, we're accountable to you. We're accountable to answer to you, to follow your, your law. But God, all of us have fallen short of that. And we've all admitted that here today. So God, I would ask that you would encourage us with your word, that you'd proclaim it to us through your Holy Spirit, God. Convince us of your truth. Convince us of your righteousness. And God, I, I would just pray that all of us would recognize you as Lord of our life. God, I just pray um, for this relationship. And Lord, I pray that Grima would turn her life to you, that you would radically change her for the sake of your son, Jesus. And God, we pray this in his name and we give thanks in his name for the glorious death, burial, and resurrection and the accomplishment of the forgiveness of our sins. And I ask this in his name, the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, guys, thanks, man. Thanks, man. Have a good day. Absolutely. Hey, read that stuff. 100%. Okay? Read that stuff.